How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Alex. You're watching Izzy's Autos. This video has been long overdue because I'm going to be doing a Datsun 280Z review for all of you guys. I've had this car for a while, but I've never actually had the chance to review it for all of you. Especially for those who maybe want to buy a Datsun or for those who simply don't know what to expect or what one drives like or what it's like to own one. So I'm gonna go over all of that with you guys today. Uh, just for all of you who aren't familiar with my channel, this is a 1977 Datsun 280Z four speed. This was originally an American vehicle that was imported here to Canada where I live. Uh, but overall, you know, it's obviously not a stock one as you can tell, the 280Zs definitely didn't look like this uh, from the factory, but I did do some modifications to it and I'll get into detail about what those things exactly are. But anyways, without further ado, we're gonna get the GoPro going, we're gonna do a ride along. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's check out some angles and see exactly what this Datsun's like in a little bit more detail. Okay, let me kind of uh, go over some of the details of this car. So it's a 77 uh, Datsun 280Z as I said. Now you're probably wondering, where's my seat? Well, I actually just ordered a brand new set of seats. This is what they look like, and I think they look awesome. That video is gonna be coming up uh, rather shortly, so maybe you should probably subscribe to this channel and see what they look like on this Datsun. I think they're gonna look fantastic. I bought this car because I've always had a passion for Datsuns in particular. I absolutely love everything about these cars. They're fantastic. I think they look great. They age super, super well, and I think as the years go on, it's gonna be an even more expensive vehicle. The thing with the Datsun, the Datsun Z models, if you aren't aware, there are a total of three in the S30 chassis. So there's a 240, 260, and 280. This is a 280, what does that mean? The 280 is a 2.8 liter inline six. So it is naturally aspirated. You could never get any of the these modeled or this model in a Datsun in a turbocharged car. But the 240s and 260s came with carbureted engines. This was actually the first one with uh, an electronically fuel injected motor. So that was a big difference there with the three different model years. And let me tell you, from a standpoint of a daily driver or driving this car on a day-to-day -day basis, the 280Z is, in my opinion, the better route simply because it's a little bit more reliable than the 240s and the 260s because you don't have any carb issues at all. But overall, when you take the bumpers off of the 280 like I did, it's kind of hard to tell which one's a 240 or which one's a 260. The easiest way you can notice that is number one, you look at the hood. The hood on the 280s have the vents coming uh, at the driver where the 240s and 260s just had a smooth hood. Um, you can also notice on the side of the C pillars there, there's the Z logos. Some of the 240s will have 240 written on there. Uh, that's another difference. And the rear tail lights. The 240s had, in my opinion, the nicest looking tail light design where it was more of a streamlined rectangular look, whereas the 260s and 280s, they kind of got a little bit boxier at the time and they separated the reverse light from the entire tail light itself. So uh, another little difference that you could find there. And as for interior, the dash is also gonna be different too. Now this car is a perfect example uh, for everyone here today because essentially it is pretty much bone stock. So it's a bone stock engine, meaning I have added absolutely nothing to make it more powerful, which is perfect for all of you guys because this is a great idea to get what a Datsun was like back then when you would buy them in 1977 or 76 or whenever it was back in the 70s. The one thing you'll notice with the Datsun when you own one, as you can probably tell from the video, it's a super stiff car. And you're gonna hear cracks and rattles coming out of pretty much every body panel because the Japanese at the time didn't really think of putting very plush materials. It was very plasticky, very dark and gloomy in here, but it gave that character to it, which I absolutely love. And we're going over this bumpy road here and I'm feeling everything. I feel it in the seat, I feel it in the steering wheel. It's a very communicative car to you. So if you're the kind of individual who loves a raw experience and who loves to feel every single bump and crack on the road, 
You gotta drive a Datsun. You, you seriously gotta drive one of these cars. Now this car suspension wise has no modifications to it aside from just some upgraded springs and struts I believe. Uh, they were replaced already. Uh, but ball joints, tie rods, those are all factory components. The steering feel of the Datsun for me is one of the best parts about the car. It's got a little bit of a shorter wheelbase so when you rotate the vehicle you literally can feel the rotation of the vehicle as you're going through a turn which is a really awkward feeling most modern cars you don't really feel that as much but with this one I, I feel like taking a turn it's almost like the rear of the vehicle is communicating with me as it rotates with the rest of the vehicle it's a super unique feeling and the interesting thing is this too <coughs> this is a big steering wheel for modern standards and it's wooden and I think it's absolutely gorgeous the responsiveness of the steering on this car is actually very, very good for it being factory, at least in my opinion. When you steer, the, the, the shortest little inputs, you're, the, the car is doing exactly what you want it to. This road is absolutely terrible, but the car is doing exactly what you want it to. And there's a cop right here. He's like, let's see this guy speed away. Hey, how's it going, mate? Uh, you probably can't hear a word I'm saying, can you? Yeah, that's a typical Datsun Fairlady Z thing to experience. Jesus. The feeling you get from this car is extremely raw. Taking this turn right here. Into fourth. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's confidence inspiring because <laughs> When you're taking the turn, it almost feels like it kind of lightens up a little bit in the front. And when you go over a little bump, the car kind of like, it's like it's kind of quivering or something like that. Um, that could probably be remedied with a little bit of a stiffer suspension setup, upgraded control. That was pretty bad. Upgraded control arms, coilovers, etc. But um, it's, it's kind of fun because this car requires, absolutely requires you to be on your game the entire time. You need to be focused. The moment you lose concentration for a little bit, that's when stuff can get really, really hairy pretty quickly. So for all you young guys watching the video, like myself, who are addicted to speed and wanting to go fast, the question you're probably asking is, is the Datsun a quick car? The answer is no, it is not a fast car. However, it's the sensation that it gives you when you are accelerating, when you are traveling at speeds. The L28 engine, I think, had roughly around 167 horsepower tops. But this feels like a more torquey engine than anything. It's not a quick car by any means, but when you're about 3,000 RPM and above, it kind of comes alive. It does fall on its face a little bit after 5,000 RPM. Um, kind of just runs out of steam there. But realistically speaking, if you're wanting to keep the L28, or if it would be an L26 or 24 with that matter, um, one of the easier upgrades you could do is put a cam in there, put a, a more aggressive cam. Because the L28 is a pretty easy engine to work on, you won't really be struggling with that too, too much. Even for an amateur such as myself, um, you could put an exhaust. These cars sound fantastic with a nice exhaust system on there. This Datsun only has, essentially from the cat back, a couple bits and pieces welded here and there. Uh, so it's not like a full exhaust. It's not an expensive top end exhaust system either. Uh, but it is a hell of a lot better than stock because when you get these 280Zs stock, they sound pretty much like nothing. They are very quiet. Um, you don't really hear much of the engine noise coming out of them. So what's it like to have owned this car for that long? Is it a reliable car? Is it a car that you can depend on to start up every single Sunday or something like that to go on a cruise? My answer to you is actually yes. I've had a couple hiccups, which wouldn't really and shouldn't really surprise you because it is a car from the 70s. This is a 40 some year old car. But reliability wise, I, for me, the L28, this 280Z has been very, very good. So could you expect to drive this every day to work? 
honestly, if it's maintained pretty regularly, I think it can. And <clears throat> quite frankly, I beat the crap out of this car when I drive it. I don't drive it. I don't drive it easy. I kind of I put it through its paces as I think they should be. Uh, but you know, do bear in mind, parts will break, stuff will wear out, and you will have to order them. And let me tell you, finding parts for the car isn't actually that bad at all. Uh, to be fair, you can get quite a few parts and lots of aftermarket companies still making parts for the 280 and 240s, 260s, etc. But they're kind of expensive, especially some of the more smaller bits that require a little bit more fabrication. They, it can get a little bit pricey, so do bear that part in mind. For me, the favorite, my favorite part about this car though is the experience that it gives you. From the moment you open the door and the way it opens, that clunk that it opens, that, that sound that vibrates through your hands, the moment you sit in the seat and you have to turn like 17 times to start the car because there's an off AC on start and lock and it's, it's such an analog feeling and it is the most rewarding experience you can get, especially given that every car out there that is sold now is so technologically advanced. This car just, it brings you back. The power that it has, or lack thereof, depending on who is driving the car, to the the wooden steering wheel, how it, it's very narrow and it just clamps on your hands. The steering feel, the bumps, the jitters, and the creaks that, you're, that are coming from the interior panels. It, it's such a cool, cool feeling. And honestly, I think if you've never driven a Datsun before, you owe it to yourself to get behind the wheel of one and to take one out for a drive. And the one thing you won't get with a Datsun though is power steering. There is no power steering in this car. So when you're in a tight spot and you're just kind of steering in your garage to get the car out, uh, watch out because it's, um, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. You'll get some nice triceps uh, when you're done that. But when you're driving, the reward is you feel every single thing on the road. You feel the bumps, you feel the vibrations, the tires scrubbing through the pavement if you're an animal and you're driving this car like a complete psychomaniac. Um, good on you. Uh, requires some balls to do so because it does let loose. And the looks people give you to the smells that you're getting as you're driving the car the entire time because it stinks, it smells like fuel everywhere, your clothes are going to stink like fuel. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's such a cool experience. Here's an example of what I mean, where you feel and, set and hear everything. Like, boink, boink, boink. See what I mean? But again, it's the sensation the car gives you that makes everything else completely irrelevant when driving a Datsun. So there you have it guys, the 280Z, also known as the Fair Lady Z, also known as the S30, you name it. This car is absolutely lovely, I love everything about it. Of course since this is my car, I'll obviously have some bias towards it, but you know, all bias aside, I think this is a fantastic vehicle and they're only going to go up with with uh, the years as they go on. So the value of these cars increase, I think, if you have the opportunity to get one. I say, bite the bullet, pay the money now before they're gonna be getting a little bit too unreasonable to own in your garage. So that's the 280Z. Anyhow, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, help me out. Leave a like. And also, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have lots of car-related content, whether it's car reviews, whether it's vlogs, DIYs, and modifications. I do everything on this channel, and I really enjoy what I do as well. So, help the channel out, consider subscribing. If you like the video, leave the thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next video, guys. Take care.